together with us this morning. There you go.
Hi everyone, my name is Jackie and I would like to welcome you here to More to Life. If this is your first time with us, we are thrilled that you are here. You should notice a green welcome card on your table. Do us a favor and fill one of those out so that we know how to pray for you. And for the rest of my More to Life family, here's what's happening right now at More to Life. Hey everybody, it's Pastor Paul. Prayer is the heartbeat of the church. Oswald Chambers said, we don't pray as part of the work of the church. Prayer is the work of the church. So we want to invite you out each Tuesday night at 6.30 to the Life Room for a special time of prayer with our church family. It's there where we praise the Lord. It's there where we lift up petitions and intercessions. We hope you'll join us this week. Thanks so much. Hey church family, in just a few moments there will be an opportunity to worship the Lord by giving back to the Lord. Because of your obedience with your tithes and offerings and the Lord's faithfulness, More to Life is able to see lives transformed by Jesus Christ. There are four easy ways you can worship by giving. On your table we have baskets where you can put your tithes and offerings in one of our giving envelopes. And, and in just a few moments we'll be passing those baskets, so don't worry if you miss one, there are, there are three offering boxes located throughout the room that you can place your giving envelopes in. You can also go to give2moretolife.com where you can give safely and securely from any mobile device or tablet. Personally, my favorite way to give is through the More to Life Church app, which can be downloaded for any iPhone or Android device. And don't worry, it's safe and secure. Thank you so much for worshiping with us through giving. That wraps up our announcements for this week. If you missed anything, you can always check out our Facebook page or by visiting our websites, m2lministries.com. Don't forget to connect with us on the M2L app right from your phone. It's a pretty awesome way to receive notifications and to sign up for any upcoming events. We love you all, and we hope you encounter the Lord's presence today here at More to Life. Hey, good morning. You got me? There we go. Try it again. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming out to worship with us again. And uh, we, we so appreciate having you here. And I, I know each week we're getting back a few new faces. And, and we, our crowd always fluctuates. It goes back and forth. But uh, every, every week as we see you faithful here, and, and many of you faithful online, we're just thankful for you. We want to tell you that. Uh, we've got a, a, a number of announcements just for things coming up. The first one, kind of in order as they happen, uh, there's a men's gathering tonight, if you're able to make it, at 530 at Morgan's house, Morgan and Lisa's house. So um, for those of you that, if you don't know where he's at, come up and ask me afterwards, and I'll give you some directions. Uh, but you're invited and you're welcome. It's just a gathering of men. Yes, sir? Huh? Oh, we need a head count. Ty, you going to count? I, I, don't, I got boots on. I can't even touch my toes. So if you're going tonight, give me, raise your hand if you're, if you're going to be there. You kind of see that? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me of that. Appreciate that. Um, next, uh, on, coming up on the 13th, we got baptism. This isn't really in order. I skipped one. But we got a baptism on the 13th. So, again, a number of you have signed up, and I, I've got your information, and we will be contacting you. But if you're interested in baptism on the 13th, we just kind of need a head count for that, too. So you can write it on one of those green cards. You can put it in the basket. Uh, it'll happen right here in the service coming up on the 13th. That, that fellow up there that made the announcement a while ago, that's Pastor Paul, by the way. I know that y'all haven't seen him in about two months, but he's coming back soon. He's been, he's been helping. Uh, First Baptist of Moorhaven has been without a pastor for over a year now, and we've, we have supplied pulpit supply for them for a year. Uh, and trying to help them uh, just, just in many ways, but mostly just by serving on Sunday uh, in someone to bring the word. And he's been in, in uh, a continuous mode there for almost three months now. So if you're wondering who that guy is, Pastor Paul, he will be back. He told me his group is starting back up in September, and the Ambassadors Academy is about to start up again as well. So, yeah, so y'all just hold him to that, okay? Call him. At, if you have his number, text him and say, we miss you, Pastor Paul, all right? He, he, he will appreciate getting 425 texts. 
We miss you, Pastor Paul, and we love you. Please come back soon. Come back soon. Next Sunday, next Sunday, we're going to open back up Children's Church. Well, yeah, praise God for that. I know that the parents of youngins are saying thank you. So I just need to make you aware of a few things. Um, we, already we've had, we've had our littles here. We, we've been taking care of nursery and toddlers and that age, and we've always got the mommy room up there. But next Sunday we'll be opening up the, the cafeteria aspect, which is where our, our older kids go. And we just want to make you aware. The policies kind of apply the same as they do in here. Uh, you're welcome to send your child with a mask, but the masks are not required. So just letting you know, they're not, they're not going to be required. Kids don't social distance very well, but they also don't wear masks very well. It's a little tough for them. So uh, we're not going to ask them to, but we are going to, we do san sanitize. They, they go through the toys and clean. They're going to clean the area before and after. So you, they're going to take care of it as best they can. So we're just making you aware before you send them. They have thermometers available to take temperatures, but they're not going to take temperatures of every child before they go in, okay? If, if, if they have, if you feel like they're not well, don't bring them. Don't come. I mean, that's, that same, the same thing applies to adults. We love having you here. Welcome here. But if you're not feeling good, don't come. You know, that's, we just have to be wise and be smart to protect ourselves through that time. Um, one more aspect, that the, the kindergarten age uh, five-year-olds, kindergarten will be combining with the four-year-olds next week. We'll give you some directions when that time comes next week as to where to take your children. At, but it'll be a fresh start yet again. And we, we already met, our security team met this morning so that we'll be on top of securing this entire campus, making it safe for all who come and go. And I, I just, I feel like I need to just mention that way back when, we've had a safety team, security team for a while, and we kind of kept it on the down low, hush, hush, because it, some people may not feel secure. I hope more of you feel more secure because we do, okay? We do, and, and because in the world we live in today, you, you just don't know. So we, we, wanna, we want to in every way be prepared and protected, and so we have good men who are willing to stand and, and, and be in that role. You won't see them. You, they'll blend in and look just like your neighbor that's with you, but believe me, they're on duty, and they're serving the Lord as they serve you. So we're very, very thankful for those folks. So stand with me if you would. Ah, one other thing. We're going to be taking communion later. And, and, and Pastor James is going to lead you through communion. When that time comes, when that time comes, we want that to be kind of seamless because it's a holy time. It, it, it's a very sacred time. So I want to give you some instruction ahead of time so that way we don't have laughter and spillage. Okay? On your tables, there's these little bitty uh, thimble-sized cups. This is the... <laughs> And not making a joke, but kind of making a joke. This is the COVID safe communion. All right. It's all self-contained. It's in one little thing. So nobody else is breaking your bread up for you or pouring your juice for you. So, but there's some instruction that goes along with it. There's two layers to this. There's a little plastic layer that covers a little tiny piece of unleavened wafer in there. That little thing that looks like a tablet. That's what that is. I told somebody this morning, if you dip it in the bread, it turns into a golden corral yeast roll just blows up it really doesn't so don't do that but it's a little piece of unleavened bread that's the top layer the next layer opens the juice so I just don't want you to open it all up and have it go sploosh all over the place um, just be aware and so before we get to that time that way when Pastor James leads his communion we can make it a holy time rather than a funny time amen amen Lord, I love you and I thank you so much, Lord, for my brothers and sisters, for all who are here today. We've come to worship you today. We've come to lift up your name. We've come to dig into your word. We've come to sing to you, Lord, to w gather together and worship your name. We adore you, Father. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we want to stay in the middle of what you're doing. Teach us to abide. Teach us to abide. Teach us to abide. In your mighty name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen.
Even when, even when. Even when.
that this one more life do you believe that we serve in the Psalms it says he's talking of the Lord and David writes you you do not sleep you do not slumber sometimes it may feel like that sometimes it may seem like that but we serve a God who is so ever-present in every time of need amen amen so I don't know what you brought in here this morning I don't know what your week looked like but let me just tell you let me just encourage you that God is working. Even if you can't see it, even if you don't even believe it, but he's working, I promise you, he never stops. He is unrelenting. When he said it was finished at the cross, it's done. He's still working. So believe that this morning. Believe wherever you are, if you're in this room, or if you're watching online, know that the Lord is still working for you. Amen? Amen. So let's declare that one more time. Even when, even when I don't see it, Come on, church, even when. Come on, let's declare that. Even if it's painful to sing, let's sing it together. You never stop. Lift up your voice, lift up your heart. Oh, even when, even when, even when, even when. Oh, lift up your voices, lift up your heart for a song. Oh, never stop, never stop. all the way make we exalt the exalt the promise keep we exalt
You had another song? You may rise again. <laughs> Just got comfortable, man. <laughs> This world. 
Now you can be seated. In a few days, we will have a presidential election. And the truth of the matter is, no matter what political side of the aisle you are on, an election in this country will not cure our problem. The reason you're seeing chaos and all that's good is because for many, many years, our nation has turned itself over to darkness. That's whether you're Republican or Democrat. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. The problem in our lives is that there is a darkness inside us without Christ that is a, it's, a, it's called sin and all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now in just a minute, we're going to celebrate the sacrifice that Christ did for us. But before we do that, sacri- that, that ceremony, we need to be reminded that all of us are sinners. That your goodness will have nothing to do with your salvation. It will have everything to do with God's grace. Jesus Christ, God himself, took upon him flesh and came and died on a cross and paid your penalty that you could not pay. We're going to talk in a little minute minute about how you died with him and you're free from sin and it has no authority over you anymore. But before we can even understand that, you need to decide today whether you have actually come into relationship with him. If in trying to be in relationship with him, you're trying to be as good as you can be and do everything right and think by going to this church, God's going to look at you and say your good outweighs your bad, then you've totally missed it. You've totally missed it. The only remedy for sin is to come to the cross of Jesus Christ and humbly kneel before it and say, God, I am a sinner. I was born this way. There is a darkness inside of me that if I let go its way will turn me from light and turn me inward and make me miserable even though I pursue everything that I think is good. And I want to come to you today lifting my hands up and saying, Lord, I need you, Jesus Christ, who paid for my sins as my Lord and Savior. If you're here today and you know you need to do that, you know that you need to do that, I'm going to offer you to do that one of two ways. First of all, if you're here and you want someone to come and pray with you, just lift your hand and someone will come and do that. But I also want to offer you the chance to come at this altar and say, Lord, by coming today, I am signifying that I'm giving my life to you. Totally and completely. When I was 15 years old, all I said was after years of hearing the gospel, I just said, all right, Lord, no more games. Here I am. And I gave myself to him, and he totally made me new. I've never been the same. But if you're here today and you say, you know, I just need, before I do communion, I just need a chance to come and praise him and thank him because with this one sacrifice, once for all, I am totally secure in Jesus Christ. So whether you want to come to receive him or come to to thank him and honor him, why don't we come today, put our knees upon this floor and say, thank you, I receive you, I bless you, I honor you. Come on, let's do that before we do communion today. Come on, come on. I know you don't have to come here to do that. But there's, there's something about doing this publicly and coming before him that seals So won't you come, if you're here today and you know you need Christ as Savior, just lift a hand, we will come to you, I promise you, and we'll just talk to you how you can come to Christ.
first of all, thanking you that your son did everything that was needed and nothing has been left undone. And we praise you because only you could have done it. And so in these next few moments as we take the time to remember what you did through a simple, simple drama, simple pageant, let us remember that what you did, you did once for all. You don't ever have to do it again. And the sacrifice we come to has already been done and it is complete. And we come over and over and over to remind ourselves that in you, you have made us free from sin, free from the law, that we may walk in the power and the light of your spirit. We love you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray it. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. If someone could open one of these for me and bring it to me, that would go a long way because this one just died on me. <laughs> two ordinances that the church in America at least two, some do more but there's two that were mandated by God and because they're mandated by God they're not, they don't save us but they're not somehow secondary, they're very important the first one that we will celebrate today is the Lord's Supper and two weeks from now we will do baptism on the night before Jesus was betrayed, or when he was betrayed and before he was executed, crucified, he sat down with the disciples and he basically was going through the Passover and at the end of the Passover, in which they celebrate the Messiah's cup, he said, this is my cup. He took, first took the bread and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Now, this had never been done before. They had never heard this before. They knew that Jesus was going off the script. And if you know anything about the Jewish tradition, you didn't go off script. You didn't improvise. So when Jesus went on script, everything, the antennas went to the top, and everything said, whoa, this is new. Now, for you and us, you and me, it's not new. We've heard this over and over. But when I was a kid, every quarter, they trotted out the, the stuff, and it was, you know, the, the silver thing with you put the cloth over the top it was very elaborate and I remember as a kid thinking what's that mean and they always read a certain passage of scripture but they never really told us what it meant or I never really heard it see what happens with the broken blood body is this you and I are sinners and there was no way I could cast it on any one of you there was no way that anyone could take care of it even if I had a great mother or father or a great friend or a great pastor, he could not deal with my sin. My sin was something that was part of me. It was who I was. In me, in me, there was a great darkness, and from that darkness came a sin that I could never get away from, no matter how much I tried to hide it. Great religion was put around in trying to think we could keep the law, but the law was only there to reveal that they were sinners. It was never there to save them. They missed that somehow, and I guess it would be easy to do, thinking if I can keep all this, all my good will outweigh my bad. But you've got to understand, that is not the basis of your salvation. You have to be made perfect. You have to be made righteous. So Jesus Christ comes, lives a perfect life, totally fulfills the law, and then on the cross what he would do is he would take your sin upon him. In the Holy of Holies, before you went in, there was this great curtain with two angels looking out, signifying no one of any sin can come in here. Only the high priest could go in there once a year, and that was after the most elaborate ceremonial preparations. He couldn't come in without blood, and once he got in there, he sprinkled, he said a few things, and then he got out. But in Jesus Christ... 
that veil is torn because he that knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. My sin wasn't thrown off into a corner. It was never acted like it never existed. Jesus Christ took it upon himself and now he died with your sin upon him and that, that death was taken to the grave and it was buried and you that have come to Christ have been baptized into that death and you have been buried with him and you are no longer who you were. You weren't just a terrible sinner. It went through a prayer and then out, it came out and trying to be a sinner saved by grace. You were a saint chosen before the foundation of the world because Jesus Christ took his blood, your, your sin upon himself. And he said, whenever you eat this, blood, blood, uh, this bread, eat this body, whenever you do it, do it in remembrance of me. If Jesus had merely taken her sin upon himself, it would not have been enough because the Bible and the Old Testament said without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. 1,500 years of one sacrifice after another, and the high priest would put his hand upon the sacrifice of the priest, and it would transfer the sins upon that goat or upon that bull or upon that lamb, but it could only cover. But in Jesus Christ, it said he did it once and for all, that his blood didn't cover. It not only bore your sins, he took it away. In Romans chapter 9, it says that it's been done. He that has died with him has been freed from sin. I've had people say, oh, the power of sin was broken. No, the power of sin is still very much alive. But the authority of it is dead. I can still yield to its abusive, usurping power, but it has no authority over me. The legal claim is broken. When Jesus Christ took your sin and, to, and, and shed his blood, and when you come into relationship with that, understand the cross changed everything. It changed all of history. Everything of the old creation that fell with Adam was crucified on that cross. And those that come to him and now have had their blood, their sins taken care of, and baptism will show that you raised to a newness of life. You are not the old sinner saved by grace. You are a new creation in Jesus Christ. You're a whole new species. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Whenever you drink this blood, drink it in remembrance of me. You know why we do this over and over and over? To remind us that there never has to be another one. Carrie will not ask you today to go get your best pigeon or goat or lamb and bring it here to be shed for your sin, to carry your sins. It has already been done. In the Christian life, we can say it is finished. Literally, to die, meaning it is paid for. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Thank you. Amen. Lord, I love you. And I thank you, Father, for the privilege of bringing your word today. And I ask you, Lord, that you fill this place, Lord. Fill this place with your spirit now. Let us pour it out, Lord. Lord, I know you are here, for your word tells us that we're two or more gathered in your name, that there you are in the midst of them, Lord. So I thank you for that. But I'm asking, Lord, for just an extra measure, an extra pouring out. Lord, your, your spirit that brings conviction, your spirit, Lord, that produces fruit, your spirit that heals, your spirit that comforts, your spirit that guides, your spirit that counsels. Lord, your spirit that teaches and reminds is poured out today, Father. We bless your name, and we love you, Lord Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, if not, we got them on a table for you there. Uh, uh, open up, we're going to be in Galatians Five and John 15, same two places we were last week. And while I'm thinking about it, if you take those baskets and pass them to the outside, there's some men that'll pick them up for you. Once we get there, you can put your tithes or offerings or green, the little green welcome cards, you can put them in those baskets and then just pass them to the outside and they'll pick them up. So thank you for that, men.
every time that we get to take communion together, it's a special time. It really is. And uh, so thankful for that this morning. Thankful that you're here to be a part of it. As they're gathering those, I just want to remind you where we're at and what we're doing right now. And over the, the last month and for uh, until uh, the start of 2021, our, our overall theme is Jesus, our living hope. And so we, we want to keep a focus on that, even as we're studying over th- other things, that, that we got to walk out of here. We walk in here, we walk out of here, we live every moment of every day recognizing that we have one hope and one hope alone, and that's Jesus Christ. He's it. I mean, it, if short, with, without, without the Lord, without Him, we got nothing. We can't put our hope in anything else. It will be worthless and it'll be dead. But we can, we can put our hope in Him because He is alive. He sees us and He's with us and He speaks to us and He's still, He's still at work as we were reminded of this morning just as we were singing. So, the last several weeks we have been focused on the Holy Spirit's role in that hope that we have. What the Holy Spirit does in each of our lives. And we're going to, today we're going to talk about fruit and his role in fruit production in your life and what that looks like and, and, and how it comes about and why it's important. Why it's important. And we're going to be in, in, like I said, in Galatians 5. That's kind of where we left off last week, a week ago. If you were here or if you watched online, you remember that we spent time talking about this war that goes on between the spirit and the flesh. There, there was a constant battle that we, back and forth. I challenged you with a question that, that as a believer, you have the Holy Spirit already. But the question was, does the Holy Spirit have you? Meaning, were you willing to yield to him? Were you willing to abide in him? Were you willing to empty yourself? That was the challenge at the end. I had to empty me in order to be filled with him. Yes, you have the Holy Spirit. But are you walking in it? Are you walking in the Spirit? Are you moving in the Spirit? Are, are, are everything you do, is it in the Spirit or is it in the flesh? And, and we decided that that was a moment-by-moment moment decision on our part, right? I mean, we literally, at any moment, we could jump back into the flesh. And I, it happened to me just this week, multiple times. I don't want to be in the flesh. And it's so contrary to the Spirit that it's glaring. Does everybody agree with that? If it's not glaring in your life, something's wrong. If you can't tell a noticeable difference when you're in the flesh and when you're in the spirit, then you're probably not in the spirit very much because they're, they are completely at odds to one another. And immediately the Holy Spirit should trigger something in you that says, that's not you. That's not who I've called you to be. That's not how I've called you to act. But Pat, your pastor included, we get right there pretty quick. So we talked about that, the works of the Spirit, and I want to pick up right there. I'm going to pick up just by reading in verse 19 this week. And, and there, there was the, the war between spirit and flesh, but there's also the contrast between the spirit of the flesh. And, and in verse 19, Paul begins to write this. He says, now the works of the Spirit, it's interesting that he uses the word works. More about that in a second. The works of the flesh, rather, are evident. The works of the flesh are are evident, and he lists them off. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. That's, again, not an exhaustive list. It's just an example of the many things that come about from the working of my flesh. From the working of my flesh. Then he says, but, well, first I'd I'd skip the next verse or I left part of that verse out. It says, I warn you and as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law have the works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit you can't work enough to produce fruit everybody hear me 
Working harder for Jesus doesn't produce fruit. Now you can, not saying you shouldn't work for the Lord. We definitely should work for the Lord. When we love him, we're going to work. And faith without works is dead. So there, there's works that, that take place as we love the Lord. But the motivation is our love for him. But that doesn't produce fruit in us. Only abiding produces fruit. You can't work harder and produce fruit. The only way fruit is going to come about in your life is to abide in him, to rest in him, to be in him, to stay connected to the vine that we're going to go to and look at in just a second, to make sure that I've emptied myself of myself and I've been filled with him and everything I do is affected by that. So I can't, this is very, very important, I can't work harder and make fruit happen. I don't produce fruit in my strength, I produce fruit in my weakness. When I recognize that, Lord, I got nothing on my own. Apart from me, you can do nothing. We're going to read in just a second from John chapter 15. All of my works that I try to do for you, they don't produce anything on my own. Now, very quickly, I can produce out of my works, works of the flesh. Because even as you try to do things for the Lord, very quickly you can end up in your flesh. Very quickly, works of the flesh can come about. They just are contrary to the works of the Spirit. And and it's easy to occur. So, works of the flesh, fruit of the Spirit, I cannot... I didn't, I didn't make any slides this week. I'm, I'm sorry. So you won't have anything. You're just going to have to write down what you think you should write down. All right? Here's a good thing to write down. All right? Here's a good thing to write down. I've already said it once, but working harder won't produce fruit. Only abiding produces fruit. Only abiding. Amen? Amen. On that note, let's flip back over to John chapter 15. In John chapter 15, several weeks back we were in 14, and and we know what happens in 14 as Jesus declares himself the way, the truth, and the life. As he begins to explain that he's going away, as he talks about the fact that he's going to send the comforter to be with him, as as he asks them to make sure that if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, and the comforter to you. And he's going to be with you, and he's going to teach you all things and remind you of all things. And there, there's this, this relationship that is, is being played out that he's describing in chapter 14, that he goes right into 15, and at the end of 14, he, at the end of 14, he, he, he alludes to what's to come next. And he says, I'm the true vine. I am the true vine. And my father's the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit already you are clean because of the word that I've spoken to you abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me I am the vine you are the branches whoever abides in me and I in him he it is that bears much fruit For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Jesus starts off, by saying something odd. He says, I'm the vine. I'm the true vine. He's talking of himself. I'm the true vine. Now, uh, for those of you who have studied Scripture before, you might recognize the fact that Israel is often referred to as the vine. But Israel rebelled. Israel was constantly in a state of rebellion. They'd run back to him. They'd run away from him. They'd run back to him. They'd run away. And he says, I'm the true vine. 